so name of the reading is analysis of active portfolio management the theme of the reading is somewhat like this that you have a fund managers and you are trying to do either a x post analysis or you are trying to do either a x anti analysis that means either you are trying to see how he has been performing for the last few years or what is going to be his performance going forward either of the two analysis so what you do is you take uh, a return on his portfolio and you also find out what is the return that the appropriate benchmark has been earning now when you do this analysis what we inherently assume is that the beta of return on portfolio and return on benchmark is same okay so whatever excess return that you earn we allocate that purely to alpha keeping the beta constant so let us look at historical uh, data for few years let's say we have 15% here 20% here 25% 17% and let's say 30% returns on the benchmark there were 12% and then there were 15% uh, 10% minus 2% and 18% so once we have this data we would calculate a number called active return or alpha to be used interchangeably if the beta is same that means if beta of uh, return on portfolio and the benchmark is same then you could call them as active return or you could call them as alpha of the portfolio so how much the fund manager has been able to earn over and above the benchmark so in this case it would be 3% then it would be 5% it would be 15% it would be 19% and this would be 12% now you would also want to see on an average what is the volatility of these active returns so please put this data into your uh, data function which is second and seven and calculate what is the mean value and what is the sigma value use sample standard deviation second 7 is the data function and second 8 on the texas calculator is the stat function <coughs> is what mean value so on average the active returns have been 10.8% and standard deviation have been 6.7 so use sample standard deviation and then you would calculate an information ratio for the fund manager okay so in real life information ratio aren't that high but in exa in this example information ratio would be an average active return divided by average active risk and that ratio would come out to be 10.8 divided by 6.7 which would be 1. now why do we need to calculate a ratio like this so why do we need to calculate a ratio like this so let us say there are two fund managers so a manager a and manager b we have written on the portfolio and we have written on the benchmark okay, don't don't write just observe here so benchmark has been 10 11 12 and 14 written on the portfolio would be let us say 16% 16 and a half percent this is again 16% and let us say this is about 20% so we can calculate his active return active return is 6% 5 and a half percent this is 4% and how much is this 6% can you give me an average 5.5.375 can someone multiply this with 4 21.5 okay let's look at fund manager b now we have written on the portfolio and written on the benchmark let us say benchmark is like this 10 11 12 and 14 now first year the fund manager had a return of 40% so we have a active return of 30% second year fund manager had a return of uh, 
माइनस माइनस थर्टी वन परसेंट सो वी विल हैव एक्टिव रिटर्न ऑफ माइनस फोर्टी टू परसेंट देन नेक्स्ट ईयर फंड मैनेजर हैड अ रिटर्न ऑफ मे बी टू परसेंट सो वी हैव अ माइनस लेट्स कीप दिस एज जीरो परसेंट फाइन सो टू परसेंट सो वी हैव अ माइनस टेन परसेंट सो हाउ मच इज दिस कमिंग टू प्लस ट्वेंटी टू माइनस ट्वेंटी टू सो प्लीज डू माइनस ट्वेंटी टू प्लस ट्वेंटी वन एंड हाफ प्लस फोर्टीन आई मीन जस्ट ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू प्लस ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट फाइव प्लस फोर्टीन ट्वेंटी टू प्लस ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट फाइव प्लस फोर्टीन हाउ मच फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव सो हाउ मच इज दिस दिस वुड बी फोर्टी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव Now please calculate. Please calculate average alpha for the second fund manager. Is it same as 5.375? Now, if you were an investor, would you prefer uh, fund manager A or would you prefer fund manager B? A. Your preference would be A. So this preference could be easily derived using the information ratio, which would be calculated as what is the average active return. So in both the cases, the average active return is going to be same. But we would also calculate what is the standard deviation of those active returns, and standard deviation of those active returns is referred to as active risk. And should we say higher the better or lower the better? Lower, lower the better. So we would choose. So let's do uh, a couple of examples to get comfortable with the concept of value added. Okay, interchangeably to be used with uh, active return. Most of the times, not always, but. that's generally how uh, so in the, in the cfa text it keeps on uh, changing language from one sentence to another but more or less value added is equal to active return so we have uh, data like this let us say we have weight of the benchmark we have three assets asset a let's call them as asset x asset y and asset z weight of the benchmark is 20% weight of the benchmark is 60% and weight of the benchmark is 20% now you decided to build a portfolio and you decided to have different weights on different sectors compared to the benchmark so let us say we have uh, 40% here that means we are overweight by 20% and we have uh, 50% here and we have 10% here so here we are underweight by 10% each on both the sectors let us say returns okay so as of now if you'd observe i am not really getting into which returns of whom is it returns on the uh, portfolio or benchmark so which means we are just looking at the sector allocation not the security selection are you following this so if you have sector x within sector x we are assuming for the timing that the security selection has been exactly same and therefore returns column is going to be a single column so let us say sector x appreciated by 15% this year sector b appreciated by 5% this year and sector z appreciated by let us say 2% this year now what we have to calculate is the active return active return on this portfolio so there are two approaches so we will say method number 1 method number 1 is you calculate on an average what is the return on the benchmark vis-a-vis what is the return on the portfolio so let me calculate return on the portfolio which is 40% into 15% plus 50% into 5% plus 10% into 2% minus what is the return on the benchmark so that's 20% into 15% 60% into 5% and 20% into 2% so the first value so this is going to be about 6 and this is 2 and a half so 6 and a half 
is this 6.7 8.5 8 8.7 so 8.7 minus so this would be 3 plus 3 6 and is it 6.4 and then we will have a alpha of we will have a active return of 2.3 And in this case, we are going to assign that entire active return to our sector allocation as against security selection. Are we okay? Now, alternatively, we could do it using one more mechanism. So we have a method two. Method two, we will have active weights. Active weight directly. So in the sector X active weight is 20% then sector Y active weight is minus 10 and sector Z active weight is minus 10 and then what are the returns that we've been able to earn so we've been able to earn 15% here 5% here and 2% here so please let's calculate a weighted average that would be 3 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 which would again be 2.3 so you could calculate those active returns either by using the return on the portfolio minus return on the benchmark approach or active weights into the return approach okay, so i'm expecting you to write down this example no not one here the assumption is that the beta of benchmark and the beta of portfolio is same it is not one I mean it doesn't have to be one it could be any number it has to be same for both if it is not same is that what you're asking yeah you're saying if it is not same because there is a different sectoral allocation so here you can always assume that it offsets each other I mean hypothetically now in real world if it does not offset then you can do alpha beta separation approach okay but since that's not in the syllabus I'm saving time on that but if you want to know you can watch the video so you can always decompose your active return into how much of that is coming from beta how much of that is coming from alpha now let's go a step beyond this now this is an important example i'm going to mark this three star because i think once you understand this uh, your thought process around this sh should be relatively you know good this is the example that you want to write okay but i'm going to modify the numbers a little bit let me keep them as rounded off right now in fact don't write observe first then we will worry about them later on so we have uh, three asset classes in this scenario we have US equities we have US bonds and we have international equities we have the portfolio weight and we have the benchmark weights so if you can observe right now the weights are exactly same and we have portfolio return and we have benchmark return right now even the returns are exactly same so we could calculate average return on the portfolio which would be a weighted average of the weights into the sector into the returns on this particular portfolio in the same fashion the returns on the benchmark which is uh, same here benchmark weights into benchmark returns now we can calculate a return on the portfolio minus the return on the benchmark and that is your value added which is coming out to be zero percent now what we wish to do is in this case there is no active return per se but we would want to decompose your active return into two parts so first decomposition would be because of asset allocation and second decomposition would be because of stock selection now let us start doing some smarter asset allocation which of these sectors you think we should assign more weight international equities so right now our weight is 30 percent so let me make this weight as uh, 40 percent and to compensate let us reduce the weight on us bond and let's make that as 10% now the moment you do that your portfolio return so the moment you do this 
now observe your portfolio returns have come out to be a higher number and this time that alpha or active return that we are able to generate are we able to do that because of uh, better security selection or is it happening because of sector allocation sector, sector allocation. allocation so how do you do asset allocation calculations you would say what are the active weights in each of those assets now observe the calculation of active weights these are weights of the portfolio minus the weight of the benchmark so here the weight in the portfolio is of 40 percent here weight in the benchmark is of 50 so we have minus 10 percent here and these are the benchmark returns so these numbers are directly being brought in from the previous schedule and asset allocation is giving us an additional return of three and a half percent now let us keep the weights precisely same so i'm reverting back to previous uh, strategy but let us change the portfolio return so instead of 15 percent let us say now we were able to beat the benchmark because of better security selection and let's say we did 20 percent the moment you say 20 percent you have active return of one but this time that active return is coming from stock selection so we have the weights of the actual portfolio versus how much are the active returns on them and then it's giving you a total active return of one percent here and then you can do them together so maybe here you could have uh, you can have 40 percent and here you would have 30 and then you'll have a decomposition coming from both the sides which is 2% is coming from asset allocation, 2% is coming from stock selection. Have you understood this? So I think this seems like a good example. You can write down this example as it is and then we would write a few formulas around it.